In driving, perspective is everything. It's not all about horsepower, or speed, specs, or numbers. It's personal. It's exploring uncharted territories and the thrill of tuned precision, taking control and pushing back limits. Mastering the road and sharing your passion. Celebrating the good and finding new ways. Shaping the future and carrying the legacy from one generation to the next. It's life. It's yours. There is no comparison. So, look ahead. Step out of the shadows. Immerse yourself in the light that drives you. And choose your perspective. So this is where it all started for us. The GT. The GT, yeah. For you, I think it, it was 2007, 2006? It was 2006, yeah. This was my first car here in the Donkerford company. The idea we had was like, okay, we take the car and then for people that want to, want to drive it the whole year round, they probably want to have a fixed roof with a door. Yeah. So we put a fixed roof in the car. And it was basically, it was you and my, and my father. Yeah, yeah. That was the team. That was the team and then we had a, a few people helping, but it, it was a really small team. And I think we, we did the car in, in, yeah, like six, seven months we built, the, we designed and built the car. Don't forget this car was really important. I mean, not, not for, for the industry and not for like the people, no. but for us as a company. Um, well, for us as a company, for you personally, for in me, the end, for you for as me, well, because you raised the car yeah. quite successfully as well. So, but, but, but it meant a big change for us because yeah. we had like a small composite department that was making like bumpers and stuff. Suddenly we had to make complete roof structures, chassis uh, structures. Uh, we had the, uh, the development department that was not so big, that grew. Yeah, our Donkerford ambassador drivers were impressed by the design, impressed by the technology, but they weren't so impressed by the fact that it was a closed car. Yeah. They, they, wanted they wanted to have, to have the, the open car. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't realize that, right? No. You and my father created the, the design of the GT and the whole company hit full cent to get it yeah. at Geneva. Then the commercial success wasn't there. What to do? Okay, we changed everything uh, to a racing um, focused uh, yeah, model, car. right? Yeah. Track yeah. car. And I was, back in the days, I was still in the USA doing my studies, doing the university. Yeah. Uh, and then the, 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 the phone rang and, and my father said, okay, so if you think about a, <laughs> a start in the company. Yeah, now's the time. Now, now is the time, yeah. right? You know, the, the dream com came true, right? So yeah. driving, giving feedback to you, to the mechanics, um, improving the car step by step. Um, the lap times went down and down in, posi in the positive way, right? 2009, we, we started uh, winning. We started winning. Yeah. Yeah, so after the GT, the GTO came. Yeah, the GT Open. The I GT Open, <laughs> yeah. That, that was the assignment, right? But yeah. uh, it ended up being a little bit more complex. Became a completely new car. A I think everything we did wrong in the or all the mistakes we made on the GT. Yeah. We sort of uh, learned from that and we made this car um, the right way. Yeah. This car was really important for us to create our own brand, uh, identity, sort of our, our, our look and feel in, yeah. in, in the car industry. So we, this, this, this car gave us our identity. So 11 years later, yeah. we are still producing the GTO. Yeah. So that means that it, it ended up being a success. Yeah. The engine was a, is of, was of course a, a huge factor in the unique selling point of the GTO, having Definitely. the right emotions, the right character, the right performances as well, right? Because the torque and, yeah. and the and sound of the engine. The sound is like yeah. amazing. I'm super proud on, on, on the GTO because Me it, it meant a lot for the company, it meant a lot for the history, it meant in the end also a lot for the development of the, of the F22. And of the company. It, it set a statement Definitely. of who Donkerford is and, and, and what we are capable of 
especially with the with the whole carbon fiber production. Yeah. We created also like the extended family with the drivers, the events that we can organize around it. It's like uh, a multi-talent. I start with uh, introducing Amco because he's a, he's a new face for Donkervoort. Well, related to Donkervoort. You are actually a pretty famous face in the design industry, right? But um, a new chapter for Donkervoort, maybe also a little bit a new chapter for you as well as an advisory board member of Donkervoort of which I'm super proud, by the way. Well, it is a super honor to be part of your uh, extended family, to be honest. And, uh, in, and it's been a young boy's dream. Um, and so uh, being able to help uh, you guys in the entire development process uh, is, is, uh, is, is just wonderful. Well, what was basically the assignment that we gave ourselves related to the design? We, we, we didn't want to change the D DNA. No, but we, we wanted to yeah, make it uh, exactly. suitable for a wider target group. We well, want to exaggerate the yeah. DNA. Exactly. Well, we want to exaggerate the DNA, but keep it clean so the story of the, you know, the design is very clean, so people understand it. We wanted to remain the most pure supercar in the world. Yeah, I think I remember the conversation that we had that was all about um, how to declutter yeah. the design into something more pure, more simple, more uh, towards the essence of what Don Comfort really stands for yeah. um, and, and in doing that uh, little by little actually taking away things. In my opinion and of course I'm not neutral but uh, we still see the Don Comfort DNA in the design, the open standing wheels, Definitely. the very long front. Yeah. We reduced the carbon fiber parts, the amount yeah. from 98 in the in the current GTO individual series too, I think it's 54, right? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's Drastic a reduction. 40 percent yeah. re yeah, yeah, reduction. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great for everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, the it, car it, is it, actually it, bigger, but the bodywork is lighter on the new car. Yes. One of the first that I'd like to introduce is Jan Willem. You are of course the the head of the engineering group, you are the godfather of the engineers. You have the, uh, the age and the experience to get the group together, to hold the group together of the, of the younger engineers. And you had, of course, an enormous task the last, well, two years. Um, but uh, one of the, the biggest challenges for small series manufacturers is, um, is of course, the homologation. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can tell a little bit about the process of the homologation and the targets that we set uh, for ourselves. Yeah, of course, well, well, we're, we're at the end of, uh, of uh, uh, many years of uh, intensive design and engineering uh, process. Uh, we've done that with a very compact team uh, of multi-talented engineers, all trained uh, by your father to never be satisfied until the, the, the ultimate goal is done. Um, yeah, and uh, at, at the end of the whole engineering process, there's uh, homologation. And uh, homologation uh, means that we make the car uh, road legal for in Europe, according to small series type approval. And that's uh, important for your customers, because they know that they drive a reliable and safe and sustainable product. And um, when we talk about the group of engineers, one of the most important engineers within your group is uh, mechanical engineer Tim. He had the, the hardest time with me because he is actually, well, besides many other things, but he's responsible of, for, for basically the, the driving elements. And I'm pretty critical about how the car needs to drive, <laughs> right? It's not easy to make you satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so so no. maybe you can tell a little bit about the, the novelties the F22 has, yeah. has in it. So um, we started with the brakes because that was uh, something we want to improve for the new car. So we upgraded to bigger brakes um, and we make uh, the new pedal box. It's a lot stiffer and lighter and uh, a lot less friction in the whole system. So it makes it way more effi efficient and uh, the pedal feel is a lot better. And we reduce the weight with 10 kilos in yeah. the whole system. That's amazing, right? Uh, beside that, we designed a complete new uh, front suspension and rear suspension. 
suspension is all active, so um, it uh, stiffens up when you the car has roll in, in corners and, and on the braking and accelerating. So uh, it keeps the car more stable. But isn't it not the biggest challenge because the car has such a low weight? We cannot use parts from other manufacturers just by putting it on our car because most of the cars are double the weight or maybe even three times the weight. Yeah. And we, we work with 750 kilos and yeah. we need to do every part ourselves and test ourselves yeah. and uh, try ourselves before we know that it w works on our product, right? But that's why we developed uh, the new technology like Xcore and we made use of Xcore to really enhance the, the, the power uh, and the, uh, the, the performance of the car. Yeah. Like you know as a driver there's nothing like uh, a torsional stiffness. Yeah. So we wanted to increase the torsional stiffness without adding one kilo to the weight of the chassis. And the use of Xcore made that happen. So we've uh, achieved a double the torsional stiffness with respect to the, uh, the previous model. And you know what it does to, to, it, to uh, steering feel, to uh, control of the car. So that's uh, a major achievement. And in fact, yeah, we couldn't buy in that technology, so we had to develop it ourselves. We developed the whole uh, car uh, according to the less is more principle. So rather than adding technology features, we've taken things out. So I, uh, if this were uh, an, a normal supercar, strange way to say, but uh, if this were an everyday supercar, then I would have to point out at electronic things and battery packs and the hybrid motors, etc. But in fact, we didn't put them in because we didn't have to. So we made we didn't sure have to because the weight was so low. The wa weight was so low, so we could make the, the whole package, the, the whole technology package so efficient that in this case, we, we have a very efficient uh, uh, drivetrain. Yeah, guys, this is our proto. Yes, yes the sure proto is. where we did uh, a lot of mileage with. A lot of testing. A yes. lot of testing. But what did we do? Um, we did a lot of functionality tests. We did track tests. We did even did street tests. Maybe we are not allowed to tell that, but. Oh, we'll keep it a secret for now. So, what one of the main, most important things we did is um, try to make the electronic system. Um, not so much simpler, but better functioning by uh, making a digital uh, electronics control unit, which controls all of the electronics in the car. Thereby, we can leave away a lot of uh, conventional electronic uh, components, meaning we saved quite a lot of weight actually on the electronics. Uh, about two, three kilos. In What's the, in the advantage car. to to switch to such a system? Well, on one hand, it saves weight, which is um, Always nice, in a, especially in a Donker Ford, it's uh, very good to save some weight. Um, it simplifies electronics, meaning that there's less connections, which improves uh, the reliability of the car again. Um, and the third one, which is really cool, is it gives us much more control over all of the available data and all of the available sensors and buttons and everything in the car. Yeah, so Jelle, you are our newest team member in the engineering department. Yeah, also the youngest team member. The youngest, and you had the easiest task, right? Of course. Just yeah. developing a steering wheel and a rear light. And so a rear light, yeah. So, so the steering wheel actually follows uh, the display. The display, of course, has all the information uh, on one, in one place. And the steering wheel has all the controls that you need for driving in one place. So it's really uh, a really a development on this car uh, that you can just focus on driving and only need the controls on your steering wheel and have all the information right in front of you. Baptiste, Wessel, both composites engineers at Donkervoort but also at Xcore. And you both uh, had a difficult job and task to uh, implement well, a complete new way of uh, creating tools and creating parts for the F22. The combination between uh, X-Core and let's say normal composite production. Uh, so of course it starts with the design. Uh, designing the car uh, makes it if possible or impossible to create less amount of parts. Uh, this was a, a huge design challenge. Uh, but we managed to do this in combination with, uh, with X4. 
and it also reduced the weight in the end, right? So yeah, less uh, less parts is less weight, and that's what we're all about. So uh, yeah, Baptiste X Core. Yeah, so um, then X Core comes in a perfect combination with uh, with this spirit. Um, so uh, we used our unique process, which was developed for Don Cobalt. Uh, but not only, now uh, it's been nearly 10 years that we are developing it and we took the opportunity of the F22 to make a showcase of what we can do, uh, really a state of the art of this process. We, well, we had some, some difficult decisions to make, right? Because we were used to use composite tooling, heated composites tooling. Yeah, but what, what we see here is uh, something different. Yeah, it brought us to a new challenge. As Russell said, the, the, the quality of the parts, the strength, the weight was the, the major uh, points uh, to focus on. So we developed a full new generation of XCore tools, of XCore process. So we can see, for example, here the door, uh, which is one of the, the most complex part of the, of the car. Um, so this door is a full XCore door. Uh, it's made in one shot. It's only one and a half kilo. Uh, entirely structural and uh, we just passed the test, the strength test. Um, so there is really no, nothing to doubt about the process anymore. And so with the F22, how many X-Core parts do we in the end have? So for the F22, uh, we have a bit more than 10 parts now, which are making the main structure of the car. Um, so yeah, the side panel, uh, the scuttle, which is going to make the kind of the safety cell of the car, uh, the doors, which are also included in it, some part of the roof. So yeah, it's really the main safety uh, shell of the car uh, is made from X-Core. It makes me very proud to present to you the all-new Donkervoort F-22. It's not named after the famous fighter jet. Following my family's tradition, it's named after my daughter, Philippa, who was born earlier this year. The F-22 marks the end of the GTO era and gives Donkervoort drivers new levels of speed, handling, driving purity, design and practicality. A supercar with hypercar technology packed with Donkervoort's own innovations like for example X-Core. X-Core, which is now a standalone company, is used by everything from F1, other hypercar brands and even ocean racing yachts. The F-22 was first scheduled to be limited to 50 pieces. When we showed our ambassadors the first sketches, we soon figured that we wouldn't have any left to sell around the time of this review. It will be limited to 75 pieces so that we can stay open for registrations for this model or even for its successor. The F22 is available for the European market but also for the UAE and the USA.